Well, joining me live is Associate Professor Ed Obard um, from the University of New South Wales. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Hi, nuclear expert here. <laughs> so um, tell us, you know, COP28 nuclear is certainly uh, on that world stage and much talked about for, for many of the countries, about 22, I believe, are very much in favour of nuclear. Australia, not all leaders are in favour due to the cost and the waste. What are your thoughts? Well, I, that um, declaration by 22 countries at COP28 is, I, I feel really driven by the need for energy security amongst those countries. So it's important to understand that um, there are kind of two elements of energy policy, right? One is getting enough energy, um, just sort of bulk energy. The other is having the security to keep it on all the time when you need it. And so a lot of those countries, I think, in that declaration are realising that they they need to use more nuclear energy. I think they're saying triple the amount globally um, to get that energy security that they need. And then there's also a few countries in there, you know, the more supplier type countries like the United States, France and the UK, um, who are probably hoping that um, they will be the providers of the technology for that energy security to, mm -hmm. to the other signatories. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because getting back to Australia, we don't have, well, we don't have the you know, the modular reactors and so forth, a lot of, you know, other countries do. And, and speaking to some people saying that, you know, obviously no emissions and so forth, and it's not that it's a bad energy source, but again, going back to that expense and, um, and, and the waste issue. But what you do make there in terms of security is really important. And tell us how, I mean, we're one of the world leaders of the amount of uranium, aren't we, in terms of what we supply? Or what we have, I should oh, say. Oh, certainly what yeah. we have. Like, uh, Australia is the top first or mm. second uranium reserves in, in the whole world. Um, but, of course, most of it is just in the ground mm. um, for now. Yeah. So, the thoughts on, you know, we're hearing small modular reactors being built and, and so forth. I mean, is this something that is viable in Australia? I mean, in terms of jobs, for example, tell us what you're doing at the University of New South Wales. Well, thank you, yeah. Um, so um, we've just started a, a new um, research centre at UNSW Sydney called the Nuclear Innovation Centre. And so this is really a group of um, academics from all of the different faculties at UNSW coming together to present this completely interdisciplinary view of nuclear engineering and the nuclear disciplines. Because it, it in, as a career, it involves so many different facets of technology and science to to build that nuclear workforce. And, and Australia is currently building a, a nuclear workforce and we're really um, doing our best to make sure that we can build that. We call it a civilian technical base. So I, I think it's very important that if you're trying to stand up a nuclear workforce that um, it's not just in sort of defence and federal organisations. You actually need a kind of base in, in policy, in society, in the community and technical experts also to provide the, um, the governance and the technical expertise um, to that wider program. And that's going to take a lot of people, you know. Um, the government's estimating that we're going to have an industry of something like 20,000 people to support AUKUS Pillar 1. So Australia really is um, building a nuclear workforce now, and, and, and not just UNSW, actually. I should say all of the universities and, and STO are all, um, you know, contributing to that training at the moment. It's a very exciting time to choose a career in nuclear engineering. And when we go back, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, Chernobyl, you know, they think mm. about these tragedies that happen. What would you say in terms of technology and what has happened since we've heard those types of scenarios? Yeah, well, I mean, nuclear energy is, well, along with wind and solar, they are far and away the, the safest ways to generate electricity per, per gigawatt hour. Uh, nuclear ranks almost exactly the same as solar. Um, and actually has slightly lower carbon emissions if you you know if you really look in the detail um, but 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 look so basically it's safe right nuclear energy is is safe um, it, but it comes down to the question is you know risk perception is extremely subjective and personal and it's not you know I, I wouldn't try and sort of convince people that it's safe enough for them because that's a different question isn't it it's safe but is it safe enough for you um, that's that's a different sort of question, and um, you, you really t for the using technology like this, you really have to be convinced that it's going to take you somewhere. Um, nuclear technology and nuclear power can do amazing things. You know, there are there are some things that you can only do with a nuclear reactor. Powering a submarine is one of them. 
If we go to Mars, we will have to take a nuclear reactor because it's too cold. If we go back to the moon, we will have to take a nuclear reactor with, to the moon with us. Um, so that's when you use nuclear. And in that sort of sense, the cost is not really the point. It's just you're doing something that you cannot do any other way. Um, and that's also where this energy security argument comes, is if you can't rely on your um, you know, fossil fuels to provide your energy security, that there aren't many choices. Um, so, so I think the question of safety, um, fundamentally, yeah, nuclear is pretty, well, safe. Um, whether it's safe enough for you or for somebody is, is whether you really perceive that it's taking you somewhere that, that you want to go. Mm, fascinating. No, I really appreciate your time and, and your expertise. And, um, yeah, let's see what happens down the track. <laughs> it's um, a very interesting topic. And, again, yes, yeah, COP28. We'll see what um, Ted O'Brien comes up with as well. And uh, we'll get you on again shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Jane.